I think the answer is yes. Okay, and then Elaine, I'm gonna make you a host, okay? Okay, and I'll be able to screen share if need be, right, Rebecca? Yes. Yep, you can do it all. Thank you so. Oh, thank you so much. She does do it all. <laughs> You're welcome. So um, this is a joint meeting of the Housing uh, Partnership and the Housing Authority, March 18th, uh, beginning at five o'clock, five o one. Um, and <clears throat> we're going to skip some of the business aspects of our normal meeting because I think we have some substantive um, issues that we want to discuss, if that's okay with everybody. Um, I did put the minutes on, and we have the minutes for the partnership if you want to consider them at this time. Otherwise, we can wait until our next meeting. Is there a... A preference one way, okay. I see no strong preference one way or the other, so I'm gonna skip them uh, in the interest of uh, going to really what is the heart of our meeting today. Um, a number of people have been working very hard on uh, developing an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit uh, by law to put before the voters <clears throat> at the June town meeting. And I'm gonna turn it over to Sharon if that's okay. And Sharon is going to take us through the discussion of where are we and what do we want from our housing groups regarding this. Sharon? Okay. Yep. So um, I hope you all got in your email box a, a copy of the most recent draft of the ADU proposal and, and understand that it's still a working document. Uh, we've received feedback from a number of different sources and still have a couple more to go. And um, we're, we're feeling pretty positive at this point. Um, what I'd like to do tonight is, with your permission, I'd like to just make a short introduction of what we hope the bylaw will achieve. And then, um, if possible, maybe go through the bylaw section by section. Sometimes when we try to hop around, we, uh, I, I never get anything out of that. So if we could just do that, and some sections won't take very long and some sections might have more discussion. Uh, for the most part, um, Olga, Elaine and I, and I don't know whether um, Helen Miranda Wilson will be joining us or not, but we're going to try very much to most, mostly be listening and to, but feel free to ask us direct questions and we will try to answer them succinctly. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Okay, so the goal of this, and, and you have to understand that I'm also doing this a little bit as a dry run for possible presentations before the planning board hearing and the, the um, town meetings. So your questions and comments are very helpful. So the goal of this proposed bylaw change is to increase year-round rental opportunities. The bylaw proposes to allow, by right, additional dwelling units to be created on any lot in town, in any district, so long as all state and town regulations are met. Such units could be within or attached to a principal or accessory building on the property, or be a detached freestanding unit. A property owner would be required to register such units with the building department, health department, and assessor's office before initial, initial occupancy and would be required to file an affidavit yearly on September 1st with the designated agent of the town stating that the unit will be leased year round. The ADU may not be rented short term or seasonally. This bylaw will not increase the number of bedrooms allowed on a lot septic systems will be required to meet or exceed all current Title V regulations. ADUs will not be allowed to be sold separately and are under the same requirements stated above if a property is sold. Penalties for the abuse of the requirements of this bylaw may be fines of up to $300 a day and removal of the stove, refrigerator, and kitchen sink. Only one dwelling that is not an ADU is allowed on each lot However, a property owner may construct as many ADUs on their lot as allowable while still meeting all state and town regulations. This bylaw is intended to replace the current AADU bylaw. The affordable housing tax exemption is a separate piece of le legislation and will still be available to property owners who rent affordably 
according to the special legislation that created the tax exemption. Is that, how's that sound? <laughs> you hit all the high points. Do you want to uh, take questions or do you want to walk us through it section by section as you suggested? Well, what would you prefer? Well, you said it's easier if you walk through section by section. Okay. So. Well, let me see. All right, Dan. Can I just, may I just have make one comment before you do section Please. by section? If you intend to, if you intend for this bylaw to replace the existing AADU bylaw, then I believe you'd need, um, you should have on the warrant an, a, an article to repeal the AADU bylaw. Otherwise, if they're both on the books, you're going to have a conflict. Of, of course. Thank you for pointing that out. I think the idea is that if that we would run this one past first, if it passes, then in the same town meeting, the other would be repealed. Or you just withdraw the, and if it doesn't, you withdraw the, the repeal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're raising that question, then um, I do have a question. Why does the AADU, uh, why can't this coexist with the AADU? It seems to me it, it exists, it's been vetted, it, it's successful to a certain degree. What's the value of replacing it? Uh, part of it is that there's sort of conflicting regulations between the two bylaws. Um, and so if you have that, then it's going to create confusion. And um, right, Elaine you, or Olga, well, do you have something else to add? I mean, right right now, you know, the AADU bylaw is by special permit, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it shouldn't have to be if it meets all the requirements either. So it, it would be very conflicting to have them both. Right. Perry, did you need to say something? No. Oh. Okay. No, I, um, so Olga, did you want to say something? No. Not at this time. <laughs> okay. So, so the you you have um, um, mo moderated this by saying that it's not limited to one. Right. So, so it that 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 was really the big advantage of the AADU is there could be more than one. I don't know how many of those actually were built, but in theory, yeah, you could have right. more than one. I think there were only one or two properties with more than one okay. that built under that special permit. And, and in all honesty, there would be very few properties in town that would allow multiple ADUs. Um, but if such properties exist, we don't see any reason why they should be um, restricted. Okay, so you're, you're, the reason that you're doing, the, uh, suggesting that we replace the AADU with this bylaw is that it, it's by right, it's simpler. Yeah. Um, are there any other reasons? Uh, avoid well, we it? feel it's less restrictive. Less restrictive. Yeah. Okay. Jan, did you have a question or are you just- uh, No, I would just also say that, yeah, I'm just waiting. Uh, I would also say that if they're both on the books and you removed whatever conflicts there might be, why would anyone bother to create an affordable accessory dwelling when they have to go through the whole rigmarole of a special permit? Well, only that it would, if it in fact gave them the right to do more than one, and if this one were limited to one, but they have right. taken that. Well, I'm playing devil's advocate to a certain degree, but, but it is a concern that the, planning board express and I suspect will be asked at town meeting or by at the select board. Yes, thank you. The, the other thing is, of course, if they rent affordably, they get the tax exemption. Right, understood. So that was my question. If, if we repeal the AADU bylaw and we just institute this one, where then in the town regulations would somebody find the tax incentive to make an AADU okay, if it's so no longer an AADU bylaw? Yeah. If you read this, you'll know that we mention it in there. And the information about renting affordably is right on the town website. And it's okay. also Thank and you. it's also under affordablehousing.org. Okay. All right. Do you want to take us through it, Sharon? Sure. 
Sure. So um, the definition is something that we that we struggled with somewhat. And do, do you guys want me to read these things or do you wanna just read them on the screen and then um, make comments? I think that we resolved, the, the question in red was one that we had uh, really for Bruce Beerhands and for the building inspector. And I think Helen got an answer from the building inspector that the size, that the lower limit, if we want to include that, should be, should be at least 250, 200 square feet. And so that's, that's a change. So you can kind of ignore that. Uh. I have a couple comments. Yeah. I have four pages of comments on it, so I'm going to make. I know you do. <laughs> um, I welcome them, Jan. Okay. Um, so, I think in my I think that this should uh, the term should just be dwelling comma accessory, because what you have here when you take out the comma and put dwelling where it belongs at the end is accessory unit dwelling, and that's not what you mean. Oh, okay. Well, that's, um, a, yeah. I, I think it can just be dwelling comma accessory. It's in a, the, and you can discuss it as a unit within the bylaw. Uh -huh. um, also, you state that it can't exceed 1,200 square feet. And I believe that it's very important you put of livable floor area. That's which you, you use that term throughout the bylaw. And that's a, a livable floor area is a, a defined, mm -hmm. It's in the definition section. It's very specific. Good. Good. Um, and I think we also uh, changed occupied to leased. Also, are, will you be, you're not going to remove the definition of AADU because, right, because you reference it in this draft bylaw. Right. Yes. So my other question would be, why, why wouldn't the language of those two definitions, at least in this first section, this first sentence, why wouldn't they be exactly the same? Why would they be different? Why wouldn't they be? Why are they the same or why no, would not? They? Oh, okay. Uh, why do you use different words in the ADU definition than are used in the AADU definition when one really builds off the other? Dan, do you have the wording handy that you could read it to us? Sure, from the AADU? Mm -hmm. Yes. I also want to make, while you look for that, uh, Jan, um, anyone who'd like to join in, um, you can either uh, raise your hand uh, on the, uh, the Zoom system, raise your hand, uh, or uh, chime in. I think that it, uh, it will pick up on that. Okay, you ready for the definition? Mm -hmm. Okay, dwelling comma affordable accessory. A dwelling unit within or attached to a principal dwelling, comma, principal structure, comma, garage, or as a detached unit, comma, not to exceed 1,200 and in parentheses, 1, comma, 200 square feet of livable floor area. And then the next sentence goes on to explain uh, the restrictions that relate only to an affordable accessory dwelling unit. I would think you would want that first sentence to be the same in both of those definitions. Uh, a, a related question is, uh, there is a definition of accessory dwelling unit that's in the uh, Act Enabling Partnership for Growth. It's where, Harry? It, it's, it's in the legislation that was just passed, the Act Enabling Partnerships for Growth. And, and dimensionally, it says, well, here's what it says. Um, and I'm not sure that I can share my screen, but um, it says accessory dwelling unit, a self-contained housing unit, inclusive of sleeping, cooking, and sanitary facilities on the same lot as the principal dwelling, subject to otherwise applicable dimensional and parking requirements that colon uh, one maintains a separate entrance either directly from the outside or through an entry hall or corridor shared with the principal dwelling sufficient to meet requ the requirements of the state building code for safe egress to, and here's where the, the key is, is not larger in floor area than one half the floor area of the principal dwelling or 900 square feet, whichever is smaller. 
and three is subject to such additional restrictions as may be imposed by a municipality, including but not limited to additional size restrictions, owner occupancy requirements, and restrictions or prohibitions on short-term rental of accessory dwelling units. Wow. And the reason I ask this is I assume that the, since this is a creation of the legislature, it represents a, uh, uh, a legislative determination of a kind of a safe harbor for a definition. Mm -hmm. So I just throw that out there. I'm not... Uh, you think the whole definition would need to be included? Well, I, I just... I'm just suggesting that that's this mm -hmm. is something worthy of consideration as an alternative definition. Harry, how would that relate to just the definition of dwelling that we have in our um, definitions and which every other type of dwelling then builds off of? Okay, it, it refers back and I don't know if I can share my screen or not because I've got it got it here. Uh, it refers back to, where'd we go? Here we are, sorry. Um, being on the same lot as a principal dwelling and, and subject to otherwise applicable dimensional and parking requirements. So the accessory dwelling has got to be on the same lot as a principal dwelling. We, we did take a, good, a, a look at that definition for sure. Okay. And, and we, do address, we do address some of the other points, like especially number three in that definition indicates mm -hmm. you could put that in. And yeah. we sort of put some of that in later. Um, and Jan, I think, um, I think the word garage in the AADU one kind of tripped us up because there could be other structures, um, a barn or something that you would want to. So, you know, that's why we put accessory use instead of garage. Right, I, I just don't know if it creates any conflict. I, I don't know, I don't know the answer. Yeah, I'm just pointing it out. That's a good could point, yeah. Could I ask the question about parking? Uh, is there any, prescription or re requirement regarding parking in the ADU bylaw? We have not included that. Should we? Well, there are parking, there are parking bylaws in the town zone. Exactly. Right, I'm just, since Harry, since the state has included it in their definition. Mm. Oh. It's, it's not required that we include everything that the state included, at least that's my understanding. And the parking, if we're repeating um, things that are stated elsewhere in our bylaw, then my feeling is that 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 should sort of create confusion, but I, I could be wrong. The Thanks other for, thing, I'm sorry. The other thing to know is that um, across the country, parking provisions have proven to be um, something of a poison pill that um, get included and make people not build ADUs. <laughs> so if the ADU bylaw was passed as is, would it, would it put any other additional burden on the homeowner regarding uh, how many parking spaces or that they would have to provide? You know, well, I think I had like five computers here, so I could be looking at well, different things. Section 6.3, parking requirements, have specific requirements for residential areas, dwelling yep. units, apartments. 6.3.6, .6. two spaces for each individual dwelling unit, except in the case of apartments, where one and one half spaces shall be provided for each unit. So if, the, if you put in an ADU, you would have to to uh, increase the number of parking spaces by one and a half at a minimum? Uh, yeah. I, I would say two uh, under two. the current bylaw. Well, you'd have to provide two spaces for the principal dwelling and two spaces for each AADU. Right. Or well, there's also ADU. a definition of apartment, Harry. Apartment, yeah. We have a well, definition they're, they're, of apartment on page two. Yeah, they're separately defined yeah. Is an AADU an apartment? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
And and well, at any rate, there is a parking requirement in the bylaw that would apply in some fashion to ADUs and AADUs, whether it's one and a half spaces or two spaces. I, I don't, you know, I don't think I know the answer to that, but there is a parking requirement independent of the definition of an accessory dwelling unit. And there is no uh, separate parking requirement in the AADU bylaw. Right. Might, since this is a, a by right bylaw, might it be a good idea in some section of this draft to reference section 6.3 so people knew to look there hmm. to see what was required? Right. Sure. I agree. You, I'm sure you'll get asked the question about parking mm -hmm. um, by someone, and at least we should know what, what the answer is. Yes. I see Helen has her hand up. Yeah, um, uh, Gary, may I? Oh, of course, please feel free. One of the most important things about the simple language that we all were committed to is that never mind ADU. If somebody wants to get a bit, you know, create a building, occupy a building, you have to go to the building inspector and defaulting also to the health agent who comes in on any building permit. And either it's allowed in the normal way that any structure would be, or you get to go and to use Harry's uh, language from uh, a couple of weeks ago, seek relief from the ZBA, just like a normal person. One of the beauty things about this ADU bylaw is that it doesn't say, oh, please, please, this is just for affordable housing. It says there are some places where with no problem at all, an extra bedroom that is also a dwelling could be added or more than that. And we're not gonna run around the zone, we're not gonna sort of do an end run around the zoning bylaws or the Board of Health requirements regs. And if it isn't by right in that way, then you get to go and ask a regulatory board of the ZBA if you could do it, please. And maybe they'll say yes, and maybe they'll say no. And parking Jan is included in that. No, so the not to the best of my knowledge, Helen. Well, so wait a minute. There's, Let's nothing, there's nothing that I know of in these bylaws that says that the ZBA uh, can give anybody uh, any sort of reprieve from parking requirements. That's come up before and it, it you don't, you can't. There's no, Jan, excuse me, you're right about that. But a lot of these places that might have an ADU could comply completely with the parking requirements. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's included in the zoning bylaws, as Sharon said. And let's say there weren't enough parking spots. You can apply to the ZBA and they can say no to you about parking. But I've also sat on the ZBA where there was, you know, parking requirements and it was somewhere in town and there was a whole discussion about how there was room to park and it was allowed or not. But it is appealable. You can seek relief. You don't always get it. But it might be perfectly okay on that lot. There might be plenty of parking space. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm here now. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Maybe we'll turn it back over to Sharon, but with a note, Sharon did just said, uh, think about how you address parking issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, can we move on from the definition? Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> um, how about purpose? Anyone have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with it. I was wondering if you had considered something a little bit more uh, just a, a little bit more encompassing of, of, of the reason you're doing this. Um, like East Ham has, uh, every bylaw that I looked at, ADU bylaw, East Ham, Brewster, Chatham, Truro, they all have a much more extensive purpose. I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, we've, we've put it in and taken it out and put it in and taken it out. I think part of our thinking is to keep it really simple and to the point um, and to bring up that those other kinds of issues in, in a guidebook and in, in a discussion at town meeting. But I don't know, what do people feel about, do we need to have like, you know, to, it, 
I know exactly the language you're talking about. Things like to support uh, the possibilities of young families and senior citizens, to increase diversity, to um, decrease increase diversity of housing type, which are all great goals. And I'm, I'm fine putting them in if people feel like that has to happen. Anybody? Uh, Kathleen has her hand up. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. I've got to unmute. Um, I would put it in. I think um, the more um, positives um, you can put in with regard to who this is going to benefit, um, um, the easier the sell at town meeting. Um, just don't, um, you know, just don't plan on everybody, you know, um, jumping up for this because they really got to get, get down to know who it's going to benefit. I, I agree with Jan, I'd put it in. If, if, if I may, uh, there are two other purposes for having a, uh, a more extensive purpose statement. One of them is, is if you have to defend the, uh, the, the bylaw itself against a challenge, you have a statement of the legislative purpose behind the, you know, upon which the enactment is based. And you can argue that, you know, this is what we were trying to do. And this right. is what, why, how we did it, as opposed to, well, here's a bylaw, good luck, uh, you know, defending it. The second thing is, is when someone uh, seeks relief from an appeals board, uh, it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable thing for the appeals board to look at and say, well, does granting this individual the relief requested advance the purposes for which the bylaw uh, was enacted? So, you, you, so there are two positives there from having a, uh, that, are, that accrue from having a statement of purpose that really says uh, with some clarity why we're adding this to the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So those are my thoughts. I, I like the language. I was, I mean, we, you know, like I say, we've had many discussions about it. So, um, okay, Helen has her hand up. Hi. So, Harry, I hear what you're saying. And the whereas section for a regulation or a bylaw or a policy is often a very, it's a strengthening thing. However, in this case, I think it would be a mistake, particularly in this town, to make promises that may not be delivered by this bylaw. The one thing that will, we know, help the housing situation is that it has to be year-round occupancy with a year-round commitment, a lease or an affidavit that absolutely confirms that it's used year round, but anybody can rent it. The landlord can choose, right? And they won't have to have their tenants income vetted. And what's really important is a tenant could get a better job. Somebody living there could get a better job or another job and make more money and not have to move, which can inconvenience both the property owner and the person who's been in the unit. Now, I fully agree that the rationale for doing this is that we hope there will be more people who will be able to find places to rent here or to occupy with some kind of lease so that it's not substandard, it has to be inspected, it will be year round, they can't be thrown out, right? But saying it's going to affect people with less money in a good way. We hope for that. And I would put it in the summary on the warrant. Lots of language like that. No false promises, but lots of hope about what this will do. And also just in communicating about it. But we can't promise that it's going to do something that we don't know that it's going to do or not. We just can't, not in the bylaw. And I don't think, even though all these other ADUs have all this glorious language about it, I don't think it belongs in a zoning bylaw. I really don't. I think it should be there, you know, in a way that the people on the ZBA can apply it in terms of 
density and all the other things that make it part of a neighborhood in a good way that doesn't hurt the environment. Thank you for letting me vent. I appreciate it. Is there anyone else that has a, an opinion on this, wants to voice it? I, I would say uh, you might want to consider more of a preamble for the reasons that Harry uh, suggested, and it would also probably help in the uh, passage or the selling of it. Uh, but, you know, I don't know that it's strategic. Okay, you want to go on, Sharon? All right. So, uh, except an ADU is an additional dwelling allowed by right on a single lot in all districts of town, if in compliance with the zoning bylaws, environmental protection regulations, and Board of Health, health there's a typo, <laughs> regulations. <laughs> um, what do we think about that? I don't want to go first, but I have something to say about everything. So somebody else go first. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been waiting to hear from you, Jan. Go yeah, ahead. Jan, don't, don't be shy. Oh, you're all going to be so sick of me by the time I'm done. OK. <laughs> better, better we vent these now than uh, on the floor of town meeting or somewhere yeah, absolutely. else. Um, OK, so you might want to say in that first sentence, an ADU as uh, as defined in Wellfleet Zoning Bylaw Section 2 definitions, and then go on. And then after that, you just keep referring it anywhere else in the bylaw as an ADU. Um, I'm wondering if you are perhaps by, by saying specifically, it has to be in compliance with Wellfleet Zoning Bylaws, Environmental Protection Regulations, and Board of Health Regulations, you're inadvertently saying that it, it might not have to comply with other bylaws um, laws um, another town and I can't tell you which one said something along the lines of an ADU must be in conformity with state building code title five of the state sanitary code and all applicable town health building zoning and other local laws and regulations that maybe is and, and I'm not a lawyer <laughs> um, and I'll turn the floor over to Harry or whoever else wants to talk um. You know, see, the thing is, I, I don't think that the zoning bylaw can excuse compliance with the building code, with the state sanitary code, with the Wetlands Protection Act, with local wetlands bylaws. Uh, and I don't think the uh, appeals board has, the zoning board of appeals has the power to vary any of those things. That's another theater where somebody, you know, either has to comply or has to uh, obtain relief if relief is in fact even possible. And so I had it kind of uh, uh, looked at uh, this as saying, you've got to comply with the, you know, the dimensional and use requirements of the zoning bylaw and leave unstated the requirement that you have to comply with the building code because you do anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, and so that was kind of, and, and I did, I think I did set that out in the, the, the memo that I I wrote, which has some limited circulation. I don't know how many people actually uh, saw it. Um, in my in my little summary, I said, um, so long as all state and town regulations are met, would that cover it? Yeah, and, and that's you know that's you know, you know e each set of regulations exists in its own little universe sort of independent from what goes on in the, the other regulatory universes. So in the zoning bylaw, you deal with zoning issues, uh, uh, density, dimensional uh, use, that kind of stuff. And if you want to fill in a wetland, that's another, uh, uh, another pew in another church. You know, if you want to ignore the building code, that's again, someplace else you've got to go to address that. I just think that uh, you want to say in the zoning bylaw that, you know, it otherwise complies, you know, except as we relax it in this definition and, and in these provisions, it just has to comply with the rest of the zoning bylaw. I don't think you have to deal with the rest of it. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, between what Jan said and Harry, what you just said, they're not the same, right? Well, if in compliance with the Wealthy Zoning Bylaw is fine, 
I don't think you need to, to mandate compliance with the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Regulations mm -hmm. or the Board of Health Regulations, since those are gonna be mandated anyway. Okay. And, and Jan had the additional point that, well, you listed those two, does that mean you excuse compliance with the other ones that we didn't list? Mm -hmm. I wish I were as articulate as you were. <laughs> I mean, I know what I want to say, but I don't. Yeah. I don't say it as well as you by any means. Well, Thank we you. We all try. Um, so that you know, that, that was just my thought on that. That's all. Okay. So if it just says if it's com in compliance with Wellfleet zoning bylaws, period. Yeah, that's where I'd stop. Work, works for me. Um, okay, can we move on? Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, and this one, you know, again, I think Harry, you you thought that this maybe wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and it just says in the event that compliance is not possible, the property owner may seek relief by applying for a special permit or variance. Um, well, that's sort of implicit. Mm -hmm. I agree. I would, I agree with that. Sharon and the rest of your group, um, these uh, the ADU bylaw has been passed in many places, which means it's been vetted by various councils as well as the attorney general. Yes. Uh, can we uh, quote unquote borrow language that has already gone through the testing process? We have to some extent. Okay. Uh, it, it's been wordsmithed a bit, but... Uh, it, yeah, I mean, we, we have consulted a variety of bylaws, including the model bylaw uh, proposed by Cape Cod Commission and um, several other towns. So um, do we think that this, we just take, you know, so the consensus between Harry and Jan is that we just take that out. Yep. I, I think part of our reasoning for it was just to uh, give people information that if, if if they couldn't do it by right, they had a way to do it. And a lot of people probably know that. So I guess we thought, just as you were saying, it's better to put a little more language in the purpose that you could um, use to defend it and everything. I guess we, I think we were kind of thinking as this section as providing a piece of information that didn't hurt and might, you know. Yeah, I and in the purpose, you can use words like encourage, enable, um, as opposed to uh, making a promise. And I, I know that was one of Helen's concerns. Kathleen has her hand up. Um, yeah, I just want to say with this section, um, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement of, about taking it out. And, and the reason why is you just said it, Elaine. Um, should there, um, in the event that, that people cannot be compliant with the bylaws or regulations, um, they can seek relief um, through a special permit or variance. Um, they, can, they can go that um, avenue, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna get granted. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it, it's not necessarily that the Conservation Commission it's going to wave a magic wand and say, yeah, go ahead. I mean, they're going to have findings and make determinations um, on a particular situation. And it's, it's not just, you know, a given that they're going to get permission. So I, 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 I would say take it out. I think it's a, a hindrance, but that's, that's just me. Thank you. Shall we go on, Sharon? I, I think we should. <laughs> um, this next one, in conversations with Bruce Beerhands yesterday, we um, we agreed that that should just not be in there. That it's that. Uh, Which it's, one are you talking about? Uh, that it shall not be occupied for seasonal or short-term rentals, partly because seasonal is a uh, less than six months, um, which then means oh, so I can rent it for seven months, um, and so we thought it's clearer without that at all in there, um, because we say in several places that it must be leased uh, year round. Can I ask Olga's question? 
she may uh, not want to ask her, but can I move into the ADU, occupy it, since there's no um, income restriction? I'm the owner, can I occupy the ADU uh, year round and rent out my house seasonally? Yes. Hmm. But you have to live in your ADU year round. I understand. And that's, you know, that is the piece of the bylaw that benefits people like your, um, you know, your elderly person who's living alone in a house that's inappropriate to their needs. And they could build an ADU, live in that and rent out the main house, the principal house and live on the income from that. But the principal house can't become an ADU because the ADU can't be larger than 50% of the livable floor area of the principal. No, uh, the, the ADU is the ADU oh. and it has to be occupied year round. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Helen, well, let's go on and see because I, it might be clarified further down. But uh, Helen does have her hand up. Okay. Yes. Um, so Harry, uh, when we were drafting back in the day, the AADU in the early 2000s, um, the whole discussion about a unit being occupied by a person was gone over in the same way that this is being gone over uh, about that one thing. And we have a line in here that the building inspector said twice that he liked without my asking any leading questions, which is 2.5, only one dwelling that is not an ADU is allowed on a lot. And we worked very hard, the four of us, to figure out how to put that exactly, right? And having, I was the one in the four of us who did not want ADUs shall be no larger than 50% of livable floor area. Helen, you're jumping around a little bit. I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Thank you, sorry. Can, can we just finish with 2.2 and are we agreed that that can be, let, that can be taken out? Sorry. Any objections, anybody? No. Hearing That's none, <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> uh, so 2.3, I think that's pretty clear because that's pretty much what's in our definition. Um, are we comfortable with that? Why is it there? Why do you need it? And why are you repeating the definition? And why are you not, if you're gonna repeat it, why are you not repeating it exactly as the definition? I don't understand why you have it there. Okay, good, good point. We, I think we had a different, different definition to start with. <laughs> if you, I don't know why you're repeating, but if it's not exactly the same, you, you would be creating some sort of conflict, I think, or questions that would have maybe. Okay, so you're suggesting it's really clear in the definition and then not mentioned again. I, I don't know why you would, especially if in the, first, in the beginning of, the, of, of this bylaw, you say ADUs as defined in section to definitions of the wealth lead zoning bylaw. Anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a hand up. Helen has her hand up. I do? Yes. Okay, okay. well, I, I needed, I was waiting for another section, but if you want to address this, um, this, there are two things that are being called a definition here, right, Sharon? One is the actual definition in the zoning bylaws definitions, which comes right at the beginning. And the other is you all are referring to the kind of general description of an ADU, which is at the beginning of the ADU bylaw itself, okay? Which will probably end up being called 6.21. We don't know yet. Right now it's called 6.XX. And if you go up to it for a minute, please. Can you scroll back up to that? Because it has to do with what Jan just said. So we have two things. We have, here we go. So here we have 6.XX.2. Go down a little bit, please. 
And this does not get repeated down below. This is sort of the general characteristics, right? It's not the definition, which the ZBA will have to refer to in the definitions. What you have below that we were looking at was all the places that you could have, you know, all the ways in which you could put an ADU onto a lot. And by the way, I stuck detached building in there. Remember if it's capitalized, it's defined in the zoning bylaws back in section two. But I stuck that in there because Jan, you wanted that in there and you were absolutely right. Um, any way you can put an ADU on, new, can, you know, totally new structure, detached building within, attached, right? Uh, you know, in a, in a building that's used for something else as well. That's all in here very specifically, and I don't see it anywhere else. We were, uh, upon Harry's advice, very careful to not repeat things in sections unless it seemed absolutely clearly of usefulness, useful. Thank you. Okay, I guess the question is, doesn't this stuff, shouldn't this stuff be baked into the definition itself? No, I feel not, here's why. Because definitions, um, the, the specifics are very granular. And uh, Jan also suggested earlier, and we, we got, you know, we got on that. We felt it was the good idea. Tell me I'm wrong, women, if I am. But um, we wanted this to be a very easy to read bylaw. So we separated all the specifics, Harry, not the general characteristics into different sections. And frankly, using that is often easier than having a whole lot of specifics all in one big paragraph. So that's the reason this is broken out. They all have separate uses, these sections. Okay, I'm gonna suggest we've, we've been at it for 45 minutes. Is there more on this section that you need, Sharon? Uh, no, I guess we'll have to go discuss it our, among ourselves, but um, right. the points are taken. Okay. So, so now we move on to the size. And um, we are taking the, the no more than 50% of the livable floor area from multiple other bylaws, other towns and, um, and the model. And, uh, and our 1,200 square feet is larger, more generous than, um, than most of the others. Um, so we can see, I, I think Helen probably is going to say something about this, but um, let's maybe hear from Jan first or from. Yeah, that's it. Helen, you've had a number of opportunities. Is there anyone else that has any observations or comments on this? Okay, go ahead, Helen. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I just uh, sent a memo to the three women. We can all communicate outside of open meeting because we're not in the same group. Um, I think we should enhance this by also putting the minimum size in it so it's all in one space. And we can talk about that among ourselves later. Uh, but my objection to having the 50% of livable floor area of the principal, uh, there's a typo here. In other words, there should be a noun after the adjective principal. Um, is that if it isn't precisely that, say in a space over a garage, right? It gets kicked to having to have a special permit. Whereas when we drafted the AADU bylaw a long time ago, we had a range of between 150 square feet, which should now be 200 square feet according to the building inspector, all the way up to 1200 square feet. So that anybody having an existing space they wanted to turn into one of these units wouldn't have to get special permission to do it. It would be by right, given that it was within that envelope of spatial requirements. 
And I still feel that I felt that 50% of livable floor area, if you wanted to build something slightly larger than the small cottage that existed on the lot, uh, would, you know, just add an extra step. But never mind, you know, that's just me. Okay, I think we're just gonna move on because this has been discussed and discussed, unless Jan or anybody else has a, a feeling about it. Just make sure what Helen said, you, you, you say uh, living livable floor area of the principal, but the principal what? Principal dwelling. Yeah, yeah, the principal unit, yeah. yeah. Structure. <clears throat> it does suggest one question because as I understand it, an ADU may exist on a lot where the principal use is not a dwelling. That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think uh, what's 50% mm -hmm. of, of, of that? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. I think that's unit it. should be the noun in there, not dwelling. Yeah. Just, just bake that into when you work on it some more. OK, principal unit. Yeah, that's good. Well, back up a second, Harry. Do I understand what you said correctly, that someone could build an ADU as a uh, self-sustained uh, accessory to their auto dealership, yes. Uh, hmm. Is that what we want? Yes. Yes. Why yeah. not? I'm just sort of like the apartments over the the shops on Main Street. Or yep. if you just had a small piece of property, you could put it on there. No, you have to have a principal unit. It has to be accessory to some principal use, but. It, the, the draft does not restrict the principal use to a residential use. And so I, I'm not taking issue with that. I'm just suggesting that if you're calculating 50% of livable floor area, what if the principal use is a uh, machine shop? Right. Yeah. So I think the use of principal unit fixes that, okay. does it not? Mm -hmm. you, you can fix it. I just wanted to call it to your attention. That's all. Okay. All right. So then the next one is only one dwelling that is not an ADU is allowed on a lot. I don't understand what you're, what, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand what you're trying to do there. I don't know. Okay, so, so you might have more than one ADU. And if you do, they both have to be rented year round. But the principal dwelling does not have to be rented year round. Only one dwelling. It is not an ADU. Helen ran this by the uh, building inspector, and he understood it immediately and thought it was a good, was a useful way of looking at it. And Bruce Bearhands didn't get it. I have no idea what this means. But Bruce did get it once it was explained. So Sharon, take a second and can you explain it to us again, please? Yeah. So. In this bylaw, you would be allowed to have more than one ADU on the lot. But by definition, an ADU must be rented year round. And so you have, you can't have, um, a, you can only have one unit on the lot that does not have to be rented year round. I think there's a better way to say this. Uh, and I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but maybe it's something along the lines of there may be more than one ADU on a lot. Um, but they all must be rented year round or something. I, I, I'm not exactly sure how well, to say Well, the idea that. is that the principal, that one unit doesn't have to be rented year round, the principal. Or every a ADU on a lot must be rented affordably, uh, not affordably, uh, year round. Mm -hmm. Right. You got it. Gary? It, it, well, Helen, you've had many chances. Is there anyone else? Or do you want to come back with a new language on this? Or do you have the gist of what the, the observations are, Sharon? We've been um, around the block a number of times. Um, and, you know, basically what we want to say is that the, so for example, a second homeowner could have an ADU on the lot, but they don't, and they don't have to rent, and they have to rent that year round, 
but the principal dwelling doesn't have to be rented year round. But they can only have one of those. There can only be one building on a lot, one dwelling unit on a lot that isn't rented year round. But every ADU must be rented year round. Right, but there's only one principal dwelling. I think you keep describing it to us in words that are far clearer than what is written here. <laughs> so okay. just think about that. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll work on that. Yeah, you can Do you have anything you want to add to that or shall we move on? Helen, you still have your hand up. Yeah, and I think I'll do it with Jan afterwards and we'll pretend we're on the ZBA. What a nightmare that would be to have me on the ZBA. But um, Jan, so I'll run you through how we flipped it around considering the use of the building inspector in the ZBA. Okay. Okay, but let's do this not at the meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. All right, Sharon. Okay, so 2.6. No ADU shall be separated by ownership or division of land from any other dwelling on the lot. The lot owner may only convey interest in the ADU by lease according to the standards and conditions of this bylaw. That one's pretty much from, uh, I think the model by the model. And from the model. Ones. I think we, we understand it. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Then we'll move on. Uh, the rights and requirements of this shall be transferred upon the sale of the property containing an ADU built under the provisions of this law. In other words, if someone sells their property, then the new owner must continue to register it, continue to provide a, an affidavit as to its year round lease, uh, or else they have to take it off the list of an ADU and remove everything that makes it a second living dwelling, a dwelling unit. Does that make sense? I think that's another section from the model and other bylaws. My thought on this is that the owner has to register every September 1st, no matter what. And it's either in or it's out, but right. so be it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, so the property owner may choose to cease to use an ADU by formally reporting its change in use to the agent designated by the town to administer and removing all fixtures that are normally used to make it convenient to inhabit as a, dwe a dwelling as a home, including stove, kitchen sink, and refrigerator. Building inspector says this is possible. Do you have a word or two words missing after the word administer? It, um, by the town to administer, administer what? You know what, I think it should just be we should just take out to administer. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, hello? Did you read? Yeah, I missed that. Sorry. Just take out the words to administer after the town. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, so the health agent um, in her comments, we've gotten comments from Hillary uh, Greenberg-Lemos too said, you've got to put in who's going to administer it there. And that's a typo, OK? In other words, the whole phrase is, by the town, uh, designated by the town to administer these units. Okay. It's a typo. Okay. All right, is that clearer? And it's repeated in other sections because it was expressed that there was a need for that in terms of application of this. The other thing is that there's more language on this that uh, Elaine and Olga and Sharon are gonna get. I drafted in a whole lot of stuff this morning that we took in from the building inspector and Bruce and our own discussion. So this is not the penultimate draft. And I'm taking notes by the way Everything Jan's saying, for example, other people are saying, I'm taking notes. Okay? Yep. Okay. Harry than me. 
No, yep. I'm I'm just trying to avoid cramping up here. That's all. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, Sharon. I didn't have oh, okay. Jan, did you have something you wanted to say on that? No, I just no, oh. I did not. Okay. All right, good. So then we move down to procedure. And uh, the 3.1, the property owner shall submit to the building inspector an application for a building permit to create an ADU, which must be approved as required in six, well, in point two and 2.1 before construction may begin. Yeah, those numbers might change when you go back. Yeah, right. that's what said. Good with that? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I know that you've talked to Hillary. Um, have you resolved, uh, since this has to do with compliance, um, have you resolved the um, septic requirements of the ADU? Do they have to put in a separate double chambered septic and et cetera? Well, according to Hillary, they do, but we, that's not part of the bylaw. I understand, but, but anyone who wants to actually build one of these would, would have to be um, be made aware of that as part of this permitting process. Yes, and that would be up to the building inspector or the health agent to let them know that. But but also, Gary, once we you know move past this drafting phase, yes. then then I think we 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 will be putting together a whole sort of step by step guidebook. How to do it in a Q and A on it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Helen, do you have something to add or you want to? Just uh, information. Um, so yesterday and the day before I got, and also this morning, I got notes from Nancy Vale and Doug, whose last name I'm afraid I m miserably mispronounce, you know, our conservation health right. agent, <laughs> about all about the double tanks and what they're used for. And you don't want that much granular detail right now, but I'm going to convey it to my okay. colleagues when at our next meeting. It's outside the scope of the bylaw, but it obviously has a big impact on how- Yeah, we're... we do need to understand it and know what's- uh, yeah. okay. So what's I got working. all that Thank information you. and you'll Thank get it too. Thank you, Helen. Uh, Sharon, do you wanna go on? Okay, once an ADU has received a certificate of occupancy, it shall not be occupied until registered with the town's assessor, the building department, the health department, and an agent designated by the town who will maintain a current record of such units. A question. The, the building inspector is going to already know about this because uh, the building inspector is the person who issues a certificate of occupancy. Does the assessing department automatically get that information? I think they do. They do not. Until they don't? Really? They, but they only get information about affordable units and it's not on the property cards so i'm not sure they don't get to see building permits oh they see building permits but i don't think it ever gets registered with the assessor there's no document that they have in the assessing department i think the primary point. purpose of this is that there be a list that is maintained in all of these offices so that they all know that there, this is an ADU. And the list is maintained probably by this agent designated by the town. Um, since ADUs are new to Wellfleet, will the assessor know how to revalue the assessment uh, based upon the ADU? How, how, that's a, how, will it affect your, how will it affect people's taxes? That's a conversation that's happening all across the country. And that doesn't help me though. No, I know, but uh, the assessor will have whatever information there is, but in general, the ADUs have not been really affecting people's tax base because mostly because they don't know what to do with them. So um, hmm. it's a good question. Okay. So is there any other changes to 6.3.2 that you want to consider? No? Okay, let's move on. All right, so 3.3, the property owner shall submit initially and then annually on September 1st, 
documentation to confirm that the ADU unit or units are being leased for a minimum of a year and that all AD units on the lot shall be used as dwelling, as a dwelling according to the standards and conditions of this bylaw. How about annually by September 1st? Uh, we said, didn't we change it? We said on September 1st. Yeah. Well, that's what's in the AADU bylaw, and my mm -hmm. thought was on uh, by September 1st is a moving target. Does that mean you have you can do it in April? Mm -hmm. You should do it in April. It seems to have worked. <laughs> oh, but remember, there was much discussion on the AADU bylaw implementation that uh, if you you know had an, uh, an apartment and they moved out in May. And you didn't rent it again until pick a date, September or October, mm -hmm. um, then you failed, quote unquote, to meet the requirement, even though you, there was no intent there to do that. I don't know that that's the way they handled it, but. Well, I'm just saying, how will they handle it in this case? I... Well, annually might be the operative term. <laughs> you have to register it annually. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm thinking more procedurally. I'm standing outside Town Hall on Sunday, September 1st, and I can't comply. I, I thought about that too, but it seems to have worked. <laughs> okay. okay. I don't, I, it's, I don't know. I think it depends on the town um, sending out the document they need to return. I mean, I think on could be a bit, a bit of a problem as opposed to buy, but I think we need to make sure the town is on a schedule that gives the people what they need to allow them to respond as needed. You're, you're right, they would be sending out notices and the notices should have the date. But what do we and, say in the bylaw? And if it's been vacant for some period of time through no fault, you know, just through the normal leasing process, Right. That doesn't, that, that isn't a breach. Um, Gary? Yes. All we, all we have to do is include a phrase in that section, which we can do later saying everything that's there or at the time, I'm not wording it gracefully, but that'll be easy. At the beginning of a new term of, you know, lease uh, for a new occupant. In other words, you can just stick that in there and have that be another you know, condition in there. And that would cover a new person coming in. You know, that would have to be registered. In okay. other words, you know, okay. And cause that's when their clock would start ticking for a year, right? Thank you. So Sharon, I think, uh, I don't know the answer to what the right words are but you have to think about uh, dealing with that. Uh, okay, yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mind okay. Uh, so then we, you know, we we put in this opportunity for affordable housing property tax exemption just because we wanted to make sure that, that people knew that this was remained a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, I think yep. it makes sense. Okay, and then we get down to penalties. Um, 5.1, failure to comply with conditions and standards of this shall be enforced. Um, and then, and what we decided was that section 8.3 would, the wording in that would be changed to say, because it's currently 8.3 specifies a $50 a day fine which is um, inadequate to discourage someone from rentaling, renting it on Airbnb. So if we go back into 8.3 and say $50, except for ADUs, violations of ADU regulations, uh, in, which will be $300 a day. Okay with that? Yeah. All right. Um, and if the structure is no longer being used as an ADU, as specified in this bylaw, such features normally used for housekeeping 
including a stove, a kitchen sink, and a refrigerator shall be removed. I don't know why you'd repeat that because you already say that in 6.28. Uh, right. Um, I, it doesn't personally, I think 2.8 maybe is that's redundant and that it should stay in the penalty section, but. No, I think it's, I don't know that I agree with that, but. Um, okay. Gary. Excuse me, Helen, someone else. Go ahead, Jan, finish. Um, I mean, the, could you could you say as part of 5.1 and the building inspector may require the removal of, you know, everything used for housekeeping, et cetera, et cetera? I don't think we want to make it optional, may. So. Well, at what point is the building, see, if, if they're willing, okay. If it goes on for seven days, do they have to remove it? If it's yeah. one day, do they have to remove it? I mean, there's a if, question if it, of that. Lieutenant it, found that it's uh, unoccupied. And the land, you know, you, you're looking for a tenant, but you don't have one yet. Yeah, exactly. Didn't, didn't um, I'm asking um, yeah. Elaine and Olga and Helen, didn't Bruce change this language somewhat? <clears throat> and, he's, and it included, uh, you know, that, that a homeowner would have up to 90 days to remove those features. Helen? Uh, Bruce suggested it, um, and we haven't looked at it yet. But, um, well, let's not have our meeting now during this. But no. Bruce brought it up, but we haven't looked at it yet. And I think there are pros and cons. I haven't come down on it yet. So okay. I'd like to hear from the three of you later. And Kathleen, you have a comment? Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with Jan. Um, um, and I knew I would all along because, you know, I, I've been listening to Jan now on the planning board and the ZBA, and I know she does the homework, um, mm -hmm. but I'm agreeing with her on this and that, you know, 90 days, when you think about it, giving a homeowner 90 days, that's June, July, and August here. Um, sure. It's not going to work. <clears throat> so I, I, um, I dig a little deeper on this and uh, try and tighten it up. Um, that's just my thoughts. Okay, well, well, there's still, there's still more work to be done on this section. Yeah. I think the comment that it appears twice and, and, and why is that necessary is something that needs to be addressed. Generally, when you, and, and I, I say this from having uh, dealt with statutory construction cases in court, uh, one of the goals is to assign to every section a meaning. And so if we have similar language in two places, it has to mean two different things. Uh, I think it would be better if this were folded into 6.28. Uh, um, and then just, or, or 6.28 was folded into this section, but it's, I don't think it should be in both places unless it serves two different purposes. Harry, it does. Okay. Yes, and that, I'm not sure if we talked about it, but I think here's the, here's, here are the two different purposes. One is a, by, a choice by the property owner, right? And there's a different procedure for that. The other is you're discovered to be doing Airbnb when you're supposed to have a year round person in there. Um, and you are being enforced on. And that's the reason it's in two places. And we were very attentive to the thing you said in your first series of comments about don't repeat it if it doesn't need to be repeated. And we took at, we weeded out a lot of that, but in this case, two separate purposes. Thank you. Okay. Uh Sharon, is there more that you need to do on this? Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. just in if Jan, you know, I don't have a lot to say about the other additions to the, the bylaw. The, the next page, two pages, really are just places in the general bylaw where things would need to be changed. I do have some things to say. If you don't have time for them now, I'll send them to you. Whatever you all tell me what, what you want me to do, or if you just... 
if there if it's a material issue jan raise it if it, it isn't if you'd send it to them then we can talk a little bit more before you know uh, everyone goes home uh about uh, i don't know what you mean by material gary I'm i'd sorry. like to hear from jan yes yes okay go ahead jan okay so um I, I'm very confused about what you're doing in this 5.3.1 residential chart. Um, in the copy I have, well, first of all, you put in um, the new term and you have it permitted in every zone, every every zoning district. Can you do that in the National Seashore Park? I don't know. Um, I'm going to tell you something that East Ham has in their bylaw, which states that nothing in this bylaw shall be const construed uh, as altering or preempting the provisions well, it doesn't matter if District F, Seashore District, owners of property located within the Seashore District are advised to consult with representatives of the Cape Cod National Seashore before, well, it says seeking permits and they don't need a permit here, but can we say that you can put an accessory unit in, in the seashore? I don't know. So that's a question. Um, somebody seems to have changed um, made a change in affordable dwelling, dwelling comma affordable. You made an A under National Seashore Park and in our bylaws, it's zero, which means it's not permitted. I don't know if it, that's intentional or a mistake on someone's part. Um, I don't know why you cross through. Well, I understand you're taking out affordable accessory dwelling, but then you put zeros in the whole thing. I, I don't, I don't know why you did that because it doesn't, you can't you can't have it look like that if you in the in the warrant article because that's not how it appears in our bylaw. So be careful what you do there. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me find the rest of my notes. Here. Under uh, five point four, intensity of use. Um, you're going to, I assume, then um, have uh, have a, a warrant article to repeal the intensity of use for an accessory dwelling unit that exists now. And if not, um, the square footage is different. The allowable fo square footage in the existing intensity of use application for affordable accessory dwelling units and in the new one for accessory dwelling units um, do you want them to be different? That's a question. Um, no, I think we just hadn't gotten around to changing that one yet. I, okay. okay. You agree? Yeah. Um. Yeah. And to address what uh, Jan, you said about the you know schedule grid. Yeah. Um, that was the one thing that I didn't know how to draft into it, and somebody else did it for me. And I thank you for catching that, which I also noticed. But um. You know the thing about, but here's the, here's the um, for the intensity of use application to ADUs. Um, yes, we're going to change it. I hope to 200 square feet of livable floor area, etc. And these are different than the AADU. In other words, we looked at it a little differently because we felt that AADU is for each additional occupant only 100 extra square feet, and really, you know, it's pretty small. So that's gonna change. Those numbers are gonna change. And yes, everything that would be in AADU if this bylaw gets passed would then be removed. Uh, one hopes at the same town meeting for God's sake. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, under 5.4.7, I would be reluctant to tinker with this wording because at the beginning, of five point, let me see. Hold on, I'm getting a little weary here, people. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're doing great, thank you. Actually, I don't know. Let's see. Wait a minute. I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. All right. This is the whole thing. Um, my concern was I don't know how uh, accessory dwelling unit might affect conversion of dwelling units. I don't know. Somebody needs to take a look at that and, and make sure you're not creating any conflicts. I don't know. Okay, so that's simple enough. Um, okay, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. 
5.4.13, intensity of use application to more than one allowed principal use or principal building on a lot. This is the one where I don't know that I would tinker with that. Um, there is the, uh, an accessory dwelling unit is, is an accessory. It's not a principal use. It's not a principal building. Isn't that the whole point that is accessory? So why would you need to change anything under more than one allowed principal use of principal building? These dwelling units are accessory. Am I, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. May I answer that, Gary? Yes, but again, um, I'm, I'm noting that it's I've gotten a couple of, of texts of people that have to leave, and we, we do have a couple of other things on the agenda. But go ahead. Okay, Tim, I can answer that later, and maybe some of the other of, others of us can. Okay, thank you. All right, so Sharon or uh, Jan, is there anything else that you want to raise at this time? Uh, not at this time. I think I had one other thing, but I'll send that to Sharon because I can't find it right now, and everybody's. I'm sure as exhausted as I am. No. So Sharon, can you just tell us what is the plan from here? What is it that you would like to do? Well, what do you uh, want from our groups? Um, good, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, we will, we're, we'll, we'll be meeting over this weekend and going through the painful process of, <laughs> Of, of drafting and redrafting and changing things and in, incorporating your comments um, as much as we feel possible. And um, we have another meeting with Bruce Beerhands next week. And then we will go through a similar process with him and after him. And um, then I think that what, at least as far as I know, what we would be doing then would be having a completed bylaw and moving forward with it. Um, I don't think there's time for another meeting with this group, um, you know, before it has to be submitted. So I, I don't know. What do you forward think, means what? Moving forward means what, Sharon? Um, putting it out as a, as a petitioned article. So, so it's your intention to go forward with it as a petitioned article. And uh, and to do that, obviously, you have to get the petition signed, which I don't think is any big deal. By when do you have to do that? Well, technically, the final date is either April 5th or 6th, but we've really been aiming for April 1st. Okay, so, and, and do you need, uh, after it goes in as a petition article, does it get circulated for comment amongst the various committees? Yes, I believe so. Elaine or Harry, can you that is that, that is the town's practice. Okay, is, so is all all uh, town meeting articles get submitted to uh, relevant committees for comment. So sometime after April first, but before town meeting, the housing the housing authority and the housing partnership can take up the final submitted petition and uh, vote to endorse or, or whatever uh, on it. And, and then that would then be reported not in the warrant, but in the, on the floor town meeting. Is that, I, what do you uh, want? From us I'm point? not sure how that, what the process is. This is the first time I've ever done this. So. Right. I, uh, I, I don't think, can a petition article, Harry, have endorsements uh, in the, in the warrant? Oh yeah, um, yeah. They're they're just comments. They're not part of the article technically, but that comment section that follows uh, each Warren article just is uh, uh, gives each board or committee a chance to say we recommend it, we don't recommend it, we have this concern or that concern. So it's just more information. Okay. So do you want to sort of shoot to to bring it back to? the housing authority and the partnership sometime prior to? Prior to it after. being bring brought, bring brought back by the select board, you mean? So on on the first, you're gonna submit the petition article for this to the select board. 
Yes. And, and they're required to have it included in the warrant. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Okay. And they're, they would be sending it to the planning board within a certain period of time and the planning board would be required to have a hearing on it. Uh, yep. Well, that's going to happen prior, not to the warrant, but to town meeting. Yes. Okay, um, I see three hands up, uh, if not more. Uh, do you want to start, uh, Jan? Um, just from the sound of, just from what I've heard, it sounds like this is not going to be sent to town council before it gets sent to the select board. Uh, you know, when we drafted bylaws on the planning board, it was always our practice when we were happy with it. We sent it to town council who always came back and said, yeah, that's nice, but you can't do this and you can't do that. And you ought to change this and you ought to change that. And, and so there's a certain risk, I think, to not sending it to town council before, yeah. before it's finalized. Um, <clears throat> that's a good point. As I, I don't think we're allowed to send it to town council. Yeah. I don't know. We're not a, a town group. Well, the, the select board oh, would have citizens. to approve it. You can request. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought that the local housing partnership was presenting this. If it's a citizen's petition, why are we all working on it? Because we had that conversation. I'm concerned about jeopardizing my position on the zoning board. Well, it's it, drafting a bylaw is part of the charge of the local housing partnership. Right. And so what are you suggesting that it should be just, it should be given to the select board for moving it forward? I'm concerned that, because I had this conversation with everyone before and I'm concerned that now this is a citizen's petition and as town employees, we can't work on citizens petitions. And again, I'm, you all can do what you want, but I'm very concerned about jeopardizing my position on the zoning board. Because I thought that the housing partnership or the housing authority was the, was presenting this position, not a citizen's position. Okay, so that's th those are excellent points, and I I find the process confusing. I have to admit. So if we if the local housing partnership is drafting and submitting this, then that means we submit it to the select board, and they can choose to put it in or not. Is that correct? That's what I thought we were doing, or I wouldn't have been working on this at all. Okay. And none of us should have been. Okay. Are there uh, other comments? I see Kathleen and I, I see Helen. I think I'm lost. Um, hi, Gary. I just want to say briefly that, um, um, you know, if there needs to be some clarity, whether this is a citizen's petitioned article, yeah. um, going forward, that would make it a non-binding um, situation um, at town meeting if it should pass, or if this is an article coming from the housing authority and the housing partnership, um, then I would uh, agree with Jan that it should get vetted by um, town council. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is that when this gets presented, um, you know, as a petitioned article, um, to the select board, um, you know, they're going to want to see the recommendations, um, board of health, um, conservation, um, you know, whoever's going to, uh, partner in with this, um, by law, the planning board, it's really good when they're inserting this to see those recommendations. Sometimes those recommendations don't come up until the warrant has been printed, um, but yeah, those, those are going to be important going forward. Um, but again, I, I want to just, um, you know, restate that there should be some clarity going forward as to, um, whether this is a citizen's petitioned article or an article coming forward, um, from the plan, uh, from the partnership and housing authority, then I, I don't understand why it needs to be petitioned, you know, why that right. was in there. Right. There's been some confusion on this. And I feel like, uh, you know, I did speak with the attorney of the day, but I, it, you know, it may just be that I don't have the right language to ask the right questions, even. Um, and they said, it's my job to 
uh, you know, as part of our charge to draft it. But then I said, so then do I bring it as a citizen's petition or I take it to the select board? And they said, that's up to the town. So again, I may not be asking the right questions. Um, Helen, do, do you have your hand up? Yes, I do. And Harry, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Harry, are you there? I am. That's, okay. That's so first of all, if a petitioned article gets passed, um, it's not a referendum, uh, Kathleen. It, it, you know, it happens. It doesn't, you know, it happens. Um, recommendations can be made on petitioned articles, right, Harry? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And back in the day, a very important petitioned article was not approved by the select board, although the language was before them in the early 2000s, and it was to create a separate board of water commissioners. This was heavier in a way than a zoning bylaw. This was changing the charter. And it was a petitioned article, and it passed. And then we had, thank goodness, a separate board of water commissioners. So that's all I know about that. I was there for it in a granular way. The second thing is, um, so I have a different status because I'm an elected official and I have talked to an attorney of the day twice about it. And there are certain things I cannot do in relation to this article. And believe me, I know what they are. I can help with drafting. I can express myself about it at this stage. I cannot petition it. I can't present a petition. I can't sign a petition. I can't recommend it on the select board. But Harry, what do you know about petitioned articles in relation to somebody on a regulatory board or another municipal body working on it? I would think that's okay because the aim of what we're doing is doing due diligence. In other words, hearing from groups about it before it just gets dumped onto the warrant with poor wording, which is the case very often with petitioned articles. Thank you. I would call the Ethics Commission Attorney of the Day and say, I am on Board X and uh, I am considering signing a um, petitioned article at town meeting on a subject matter that comes within the jurisdiction of board X. May I do that without violating chapter 268A? And they'll say, yes, you can, or no, you can't. And that would be the end of it. Uh, they, you know, that advice is a safe harbor if you um, are factually accurate and complete and you follow their advice. Aaron, uh, didn't you do I, that? I'm sorry. I'm not sure that I, off the top of my head, I'm willing to say one way or the other what the answer should be, but it certainly is possible to find out. Well, uh, I did call the AOD and they did say, I mean, I said, I read our charge that's on the website and yeah. they said, then yes, you may draft this, um, this article. But then when I called back to say, well, can I submit it as a petitioned article or do I have to do it through the select board? They said, that's up to the town. So I can call again, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I don't know that I'll be able to word it any better uh, so that I will get a more clear answer. I, I think the issue here is if it's submitted to the select board, is it gonna make it on the warrant? Because if it's not submitted as a petitioned article, it's in the discretion of the select board, whether it ends up on the warrant or on the cutting room floor. I think we do have substantial support on the select board. So maybe this is not an issue. Maybe the LHP should draft it and submit it to the select board. You know what? And if the select board doesn't accept it, then so be it. You know, we go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Elaine, did you want to say something? Well, I just wanted to say that our intent was for it to come from the local housing partnership with the support of the housing authority, which is why we had a joint meeting today and why we really, really care to get your input and to make sure that what goes forward 
is is um, you know is supported by you. Um, it was not an intent to have a citizens petition. I think you know getting the information of how to make sure it was done properly, whether we can send it to town council. It's been a, it's been a bit challenging to get that. I mean, if it can go to town council, great. There might not be time for that. Um, but um, the intent was to come from you know the housing groups. Well, the select board could send it to the town council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would expect that once this either crosses the select board's desk or the planning board's desk, it's going to end up in front of town council. Okay. The sooner the better then. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and continue drafting. And, um, and then it will, as I understand it, then we submit it to the select board. Wait a minute. They, wait a minute. I don't think that the membership of the housing partnership has actually... Oh. Yes, I, I've asked this question okay. half a dozen different times um, as to what the nature of this this activity was. But be that as it may, going forward, if it's your okay. if it's the, your intent to bring it for an endorsement for the by the housing partnership to then submit it to the select board, then I think we need you know a more finite document uh, that says here's what it is, uh, and okay. we'll ask us to to vote on it and to vote on the on actually submitting it to the select board. Okay. And the same thing, I think I don't want to speak for Elaine, but no, I agree. The same thing would be true for the partnership. Okay. The, that that makes sense to me. So and then we need to schedule uh, another meeting of this board okay. of this of these two committees. So is that correct? I just want to tell you, my computer is going to run out of battery. It's mm -hmm. all plugged in, but it's not working. So if I disappear, it's not because I'm like, you know, <laughs> you, haven't, <laughs> you haven't actually run away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Elaine. Yes. Uh, we have a regularly scheduled meeting the first week of um, April. Um, is that enough? Is that enough time? No. I don't think so. I think we might have to look at a week from today or something like that, or or next Wednesday. I, I I mean, I think it's worth it. It would be a much more, you know, it'll be reacting to a final document. Today's the 18th. 18th. All right. So this would, this would be something like the 25th or, or the, uh, the 24th, 26th, you want to have another meeting? Or the week of when it turns to April. Um, is that well, like the? Well, the week, uh, the next week is the week of the 29th, but mm -hmm. I thought you needed to have it done by April 1st. That was our goal. It, act, it absolutely has. Well, that's for a petitioned article. I don't know what the deadline is for the select board. The deadline for the select board is they can do anything up until the moment they sign the warrant but they won't be pleased if it shows up 10 minutes before they're about to sign the warrant. Right. No, of course. Right. So you do you know when they sign the warrant? I don't. Well, can you find out when that is? And can you, I think it's somewhat incumbent upon you I, I guys, would. you women, to say, when can you have a final draft for us to actually approve? I would estimate it's about five weeks before the town meeting approximately four to five weeks. Is this a question we should ask Michael DeVasto? Well, I think right now all we're trying to do is figure out when we have a next meeting. That's Kellen. What am I, chopped liver? I mean, I like chopped liver, but guys, so we went over this. Um, the real issue is the day before it goes to the printer, but as Harry said, the board is not often pleased by that kind of deadline. Harry's right. Five weeks would be reasonable, but I have to tell you that if, you know, fine with me, whatever gets decided, but if you want it before the select board, uh, I can't do this because I'm on the board and open meeting law, but this, everybody needs to bring them up to speed about what's been going on with it, okay? That it's been in the works, how it's been worked on, when the draft might come, and I can't do that. 
Okay, thank you. So does that mean, is that meaning getting on the agenda of the select board and explaining it? Yeah, and jockeying for position on the agenda. And um, the other thing is now, if you're not gonna do the petitioned article, remember town meeting's gonna be on June 5th. So that gives more time, but let's just think very carefully about the pros and cons of petitioned or not petitioned. Of course, it's much nicer when it goes through the select board, right? Not just because of time, but anyway, thank you. I thought we already decided that. Well, I did too, but we've gotten new information, you know, we'll figure it out, whatever. Okay, I think we, I think we decided that we're gonna take it to the select board for submission. And so if we have it by the end of the first week in April, that should be okay, right? Yep. How about uh, if we have a meeting of the partnership uh, and the housing authority for this purpose, uh, sometime the week of the March 29th, would that give you enough time to put together a final, both a final strategy and a final draft of the bylaw? Um, what do you think, ladies? I think so. Okay. Okay. So, so I'd like to propose, um, I'm just looking at the calendar arbitrarily saying Monday the 29th. It works for me. Does it, yep. Well, I'm actually asking Elaine, does that? Mm -hmm. yep. And Harry, there, is, there was talk about having a trust meeting then, but, but nothing definite. Correct. So uh, is there a time of day that works for people? better or worse? So I, I would, I'd love it if it wasn't late at night. Uh, what is late? Well, what is late, Sharon? This feels late. <laughs> All right. So how about if we do it at four o'clock on Monday, the 29th? Sounds good. Um, so that would mean um, that we would have to post it. If, I think they don't count the weekend. So I'll count the weekends, Thursday. Right. So Thursday, the 25th, Thursday. you will have to get to Elaine and I whatever material so that we can post that meeting uh, in compliance with the open meeting law. Is that, is that doable? We'd have to get the draft to you. We'd have to get the final version right. by the, to you. By we're, moving, we're moving past draft now. This would be the proposal. Right that you would ask the housing committees to vote on. Elaine, do you, do you think that that's doable since we're meeting with Bruce next Wednesday? Yeah, no, uh, you know, if, if, if the decision of bringing it to the select board gives us a little more time, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would take a little more time. So then, then the 29th would not be a good date if we have to have the final copy by the 25th. Yeah, I don't wanna wait, you know, this has been really valuable and I appreciate everything people have put into this, but I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna waste time again. I don't wanna waste people's time. We wanna to come to you with the final draft, so. Well, could we, we say it by the 31st instead of the 29th and that'll give us a couple more days? Um, we have, we're doing our buy down lottery on the 31st. Oh, that's right. And, um, the week after, maybe as soon as possible. I mean, we have a housing authority meeting on Thursday. The first. That's the what first. I was saying, Elaine. Is that we could just make that a yeah. joint meeting and. That's fine. That, now that we have a little more breathing space, yeah. Okay, so let's be clear on what it is that we're doing. Uh, so you are going to come forward with an idea to to put a uh, a bylaw, ADU bylaw. Uh, as a, uh, you'll decide, I guess, uh, but if you want it to be through the select board and, and endorsed by the housing committees, you'll have to make that decision uh, before the first, uh, and you'll have to get us the material by um, Monday the, or Tuesday, or Monday the 29th. Okay. And that will yeah, be that's more the, comfortable. The final, that will be the final copy of what you hope to present. Yes. So is when it, is the meeting, Gary? Uh, I, I'm proposing it, Jan, to be a joint meeting with the Housing Authority and the Housing Partnership 
on uh, the first Thursday, the first. The normal time that we meet is at 10 o'clock. Do you want to change the time? It, it might be helpful to have the morning to. So what time would you like to, what, what time is good? Yeah, any time in the afternoon. Do, do you want to make it again at four o'clock that day? If there's nothing else that day, I guess we should make sure. Okay. All right, so that gives us the calendar. It's four o'clock on the 1st of uh, April and you will get us uh, all the necessary materials and your strategy uh, by the 29th. Yes. Okay. All right, is there anything else that you need? Mm, no, glass I mean, of wine. <laughs> with, the, with regard to the Bible anyway. <laughs> uh, thank um, you so much. I was going to announce that on the 31st, uh, we're having the uh, lottery drawing. Uh, we have four qualified uh, people uh, for the buy down, and it's uh, scheduled for five o'clock uh, on the 31st at ta outside town hall. And uh, Lane will have to figure out who's actually going to do the drawing, but right. yep. we'll work on that. The other thing that's a little time sensitive that I wanted to bring up before we leave is uh, congratulations, uh, thank you to CDP. We were awarded a, um, a technical grant by Mass Housing Partnership uh, to work on the integration of the new trust, the housing authority and the housing partnership. Um, and uh, that is a, a group that will be starting in the next couple of weeks and we need some volunteers to do that. Uh, I will since virtually no one on the partnership has left. <laughs> Jan, you wanna, you wanna take on it? <laughs> and, and <laughs> <the task>? No. <laughs> no. Are you sorry, honestly, you, wanna, you wanna try to think about it? Wait, don't answer yet. <laughs> honestly, I was daydreaming and I, I'm, I'm kinda out of it. I don't even know what you said. So why don't, why don't you tell me what, what you asked me? <laughs> no, <laughs> no is probably a good answer. <laughs> right, this okay. is not a heavy lifting one. What, we got what? a good, Good thing, we got an award from the state. Right, I heard that part, I heard that part. And what they're doing, they'll, they, their experts in housing are gonna come to Wellfleet, uh, I don't know, physically or just by Zoom, uh, and help us with the integration of what should the housing partnership be doing? What should the housing authority be doing? What should the trust be doing? And so we're looking for a small group to act uh, as the, you know, the committee uh, to work on that assignment. I think a little clarification is that okay. the initial committee needs to be small to set up kind of the ground rules, but then it will involve everybody. You know, the discussions will include all our groups. So, you know, and, people and that would be interested in helping set the framework up would be great. We have sense such intertwining interlocking relationship that a number of people are on the same on, on different committees and so we can't have them be overlapping uh, yeah so the intent is not to have a quorum from any yeah. committee so that we can work more freely in the planning stage so, so we I just need a representative from the partnership uh, it, it, maybe gary you could give me more information later i don't know how much time is involved and when it's when it is because i got a sick dog and a sick husband and oh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not Harry saying no, but has, I just don't know. Harry has been in communication with Mass Housing Partnership. I don't know if you have any answer to that. Harry. I think that what we're talking about is is a committee of say five or six people plus the CDP whose purpose is going to really be define to define the scope and the timing of the project as opposed to actually doing the project. That's my under understanding, and. Uh, uh, given that we have, let's see, uh, Gary is on all three bodies, Elaine is on the Housing Authority and the Housing Trust, and Sharon's on the Housing Partnership and the Housing Trust. We've got to be careful how we construct this committee so we don't end up having to post meetings and, and do minutes and do agendas and all that stuff. So, yeah. so you know, if, if we had... Uh, for example, uh, Gary or Elaine or Sharon, that kind of ticks two or three boxes. And we could fill out the committee, the rest of the committee with uh, 
you know, another one or two people from the LHP or maybe one or two people from the housing trust or maybe one more housing authority member to, to get our number. So I kind of guess was looking for maybe a couple LHP people. Maybe, you know, a lot of the LHP people have stepped off the screen here right. out of the meeting. Right. So I think, uh, you know, given Jan's situation with uh, being on the ZBA and sick husband and sick dog, and I'm very sorry for that. No, that's, uh, that's you know, either maybe Susan Spear or... We can certainly look for other people. So Jan, it, I would say... Think, keep me in reserve, okay? I was keep me say, in think, reserve. think about it. Um, and or, and or maybe come to the first meeting and decide whether it's too much or too little, but, um, and we can look for other people. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anything else, Elaine, that you wanted to accomplish tonight? No, this is what that, we did the main thing yeah. we have to yeah. do. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much for your, your patience and, and all your time yes. and effort. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's like uh, the line about uh, democracy and sausage being made. So uh, uh, we'll get Stay there. In the end. <laughs> right, but we'll get there in the end. But thank you very much. And so uh, the next meeting is on the first at four o'clock. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Great work. <laughs>